Hello, hello, and welcome to my channel. My name is Emily. This is my channel, Books for Life. So today I want to wrap up all the other books that I read during the month of November. I recently posted my wrap up for the one readathon to rule them all. And during that readathon, I read five books. Those books were Dead Voices by Catherine Arden, the graphic novel version of Legend by Marie Lu, The Toll by Neil Shusherman, The Queen of Nothing by Holly Black, and Wicked Fox by Kate Cho. If you want to know more about my thoughts on all of those, please check out that video. I will leave a link posted up above and a link in my description box. So I read six other books during the month of November, so that's 11 books total, which actually was a pretty good reading month for me. Two of them I technically finished in December, but I am going to talk about them here because I did read them primarily in November. So as you know, three of those six were the Ember and the Ashes series, so that would be an Ember in the Ashes by Saba Tahir, A Torch Against the Night by Saba Tahir, and finally A Reaper at the Gates. Now technically I finished A Reaper at the Gates in December. I did read a good chunk of it during the month of November and it is part of the series so I am just going to talk about it but I do think it was like December, I don't know, 8th maybe, 6th, something like that when I finally actually finished it. Um, but I really enjoyed all of these. My favorite was probably An Ember in the Ashes with A Torch Against the Night coming second. A Reaper at the Gates was a little bit, um, like, just took some, like, turns that I didn't necessarily love, but I did love all of these in general. Like, I gave, I'd give both of these, like, 5 out of 5, and I'd give this one 4.5 out of 5 stars. Like, it's an excellent series. Um, so if you don't know, this is about this girl named Leia, and her family pretty much dies like right in the first chapter so leia is being raised by her nan and pop because her mom and her father and her older sister died when she was really young like she was like five or something when they died uh because they had joined this resistance against the martial empire and they were killed her and her brother darian are being raised by her grandparents and during the middle of the night, these masks showed up. And masks are these, like, trained super soldiers. And they are, like, the most deadly soldier out there. Masks shows up and kills her Nana and Pop. This is, like, chapter one, so I'm not spoiling anything for you. But kills her Nana and her Pop, and then they steal her older brother. So she decides to, like, go undercover, and she becomes, like, a servant in, like, the marshal. It's, like, their school where they're training other masks and other soldiers and so she becomes a servant there to try to figure out like where her brother is hiding and how she can get to him. So this is like one girl's fight to like help take on the Empire and the story goes from there. You have a couple different main characters. This does have multiple perspectives which I really enjoyed. I just loved this world. I loved the characters. I loved um, the dynamics between some of the characters. It was fast paced. There was a lot of action. There were some twists that I didn't see coming and I really enjoyed all three of them. I don't know when the fourth is coming out. There will be a fourth and I believe the final but I'm not sure if there's even a release date at this point for it. But I'm definitely glad that I finally got all three of these read and off my shelves so I can put them in my classroom. So this might have been a spoiler for uh, another video that's coming out soon, but there you go, pre-filming. So the next book that I read was actually sitting there for a long time and I kind of buddy read this. I'm gonna be honest, I really kind of dropped the ball and buddy reading this. I uh, kind of suck and Victoria from a musical bookworm. I'm really sorry about that. So I don't know what happened, but I really wasn't able to like finish the last section with her and then I just never told her my thoughts. But we read Skyward by Brandon Sanderson and this is a sci-fi novel. Um, it takes place on another planet and you follow this main character, Spensa. And her, her, Spensa's father is a traitor. So when she was young, her father was battling this battle of Alta and he ended up going traitor and like running, like he was a coward. And so he is shot down by a fellow man and a fellow pilot and she and her family are kind of like harassed um, forever because she's been brand and a traitor and a coward. So Spencer's dream is to get into pilot school and she they're they are very reluctant to let her in. They don't want to let her in because like she is such a pariah and so it's her story and what ha finally happens. This is an awesome sci-fi novel. I loved it. I did get a little confused with some of the action scenes. I just had to slow down and like read it more carefully because there was like so much happening. But there is this sentient like spacecraft that she finds 
and it has such a unique sense of humor and then she also makes pet like a, a pet out of like this green like slug thing which she nicknames doom slug so i really like spence as a character she says some like really quirky and weird things at times like um you're gonna die like a thousand deaths bleeding in the fiery pit of hell and just like such dramatic random stuff and she is uh <laughs> like a fanatic for like old time like warrior stories like her her grandmother would tell her stories of like Genghis Khan and Beowulf like just like a lot of our like um like military hi uh, heroes throughout history and she like takes after them so she'll like use language from like different stories that she's heard in her real life which makes her like really really quirky but she has like such a good heart she really really wants to be a pilot and you can see that and she's just a good soul and I loved her as a character she grew a lot throughout this she wasn't the type to not notice when she's done something wrong she would acknowledge it and I just thought she was a really strong protagonist I'm definitely going to read the next one which was just released I haven't purchased it yet but I definitely want to read it so back in May I read three Lady Sherlock Holmes books or Lady Sherlock books um, by Sherry Thomas. So the my library finally got the next one and that was The Art of Theft. And this was Lady Sherlock number four. And I really enjoyed this. I listened to the audiobook. I gave this four out of five stars. Oh, I gave Skyward five out of five if I didn't say that. Um, so I gave this four out of five stars. I really just enjoy these stories. I find them fun. I like the characters. I like the dynamics. So this time they were trying to steal a painting at an art auction at like this really high security place in uh, in France. So they had to like travel back and forth to France a bunch and they had to like stake this place out and they're not typically uh, robbers. <laughs> so this was like a little bit of a different kind of job for Lady Sherlock and I thought it was really fun. So last year I read Before We Were Yours by Lisa Wingate. I'll leave a picture here and it was one of my most favorite reads of 2018 and so I recently saw on my Libby app that a companion to Before We Were Yours called Before and After the Incredible Real Life Stories of Orphans Who Survived the Tennessee Children's Home Society by Lisa Wingate and Judy Christie came out and so this is the stories of people that they met after Lisa Wingate published her book. So after she published her book she had a ton of people come out to her and talk to her about their experiences and ask if she could help organize some sort of like get together for like different survivors and or all survivors who wanted to attend. Lisa Wingate like traveled the country meeting with people and Judy Christie did as well and they like wrote down real stories of actual people whose lives were affected by the Tennessee Children's Home Society. And this was fascinating to hear all these different stories and have it put together. However, I will say that I did not like it as much as the fictional retelling. I mean the craft of the story was just missing because it is just like accounts of what happened. It was still really good and I enjoyed it. I'm giving this four out of five stars. The other thing that made this hard with an audiobook was you had so many different people who were giving accounts and she would like talk about them, share their story, move on to the next person, then move on to the next person, and then like make a comment about another person because this like went chronological as she like met people and as she's like planning the event that took place in Tennessee. So like sometimes she would go back to what somebody has previously said and I didn't have a physical book to like flap back and forth and be like, oh yeah, you're a witch person because there were just so many people that she included. It was just way too many names for me to keep track inside my head as I'm like listening to this over the course of a week and a half, driving to and from work, doing chores, like it, it was just a tough audiobook in that sense. Their stories were fascinating. It was a really good read. I enjoyed having that comparison between the fictional retelling and this. Definitely check it out if you loved Before We Were Yours. So that's it for the rest of the month of November. So if you want to hear my thoughts on the five books that I read for the one readathon to roll them all, make sure you check that out. If you like this video, please give a thumbs up and don't forget to hit subscribe. I'll be back with my bookish video soon. As always, keep reading.